Now, billions of U.S. dollars are now being uh, distributed to citizens uh, by government uh, to stave off the deteriorating economic impact and the rising poverty from COVID-19. The unprecedented pandemic demands an unprecedented government response. Now, more than 126 countries around the globe have already introduced or adapted social protection or labor policies to assist those in need. In studios, we may have a Mr. Stephen Kasaija, the head of expanding social protection program in, from the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development. I have Anne Lumbasi, the senior program officer from Sehad, and Wire Kawanguzi, the program manager from Arue. Now, Arue stands for uh, ARUE stands for uh, Action for Rural Women's Empowerment. The conversation today is, is, is organized by ARUE and in partnership with OSIA. This conversation, you can be a part of it via digital platforms. The hashtag is COVID-19 and social protection. I'm Andrew Chamagero and this is going to be a totally a great conversation. Well, good morning, my panel. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm very grateful, one, to have the government with me, sure. to have uh, the CSO with me, and to have an NGO that works in line with, um, with the social services. Um, Willie, you work a lot on the ground. What is the status of social services on the ground, especially with women? Well, thank you so much, Andrew, mm. for that question. Um, first of all, mm. I want to say that we are experiencing a lot of poverty as a country, as, as a country in mm. communities, mm. and um, statistically, in the country, we are about eight million Ugandans that are in poverty, wow. and that was before <coughs> the coming of the pandemic. Mm. And at the time when the, the pandemic came, mm -hmm. uh, statistically, it is estimated that another 3.3 million people have actually also moved to poverty. Mm -hmm. So that means we have close to 12 million people in poverty right now. That's alarming. You see? Mm. So when you look at what is actually happening on ground, poverty is number one. Mm. After poverty, when, when poverty is actually evident, mm. we see other issues coming in play. Mm. Issues of inequality. Yep. If I may talk about gender inequality, for yes, example, yes. for the women that I yes, represent. Yes. And I'm so, grateful it's a man <laughs> representing women. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, actually uh, we actually did this um, a bit uh, deliberately because mm. uh, as men, we need to come out and speak for women. Mm. Because most of the issues that are actually affecting women, we are the biggest perpetrators. True. So there is increasing inequality. Mm in terms of, of, of gender inequality. Mm -hmm. And this has actually been worsened even after the coming of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. When you talk about issues of <coughs> reducing incomes, you know what, ha what COVID has actually brought to the countries yeah. uh, worldwide. Mm. When you talk about reducing incomes, in, in trying to respond to the mechanisms mm. of preventing and, and adopting to the COVID-19, mm. we've seen people losing their jobs. We've seen businesses closing. Mm. And the most affected are actually women. Yeah. Yes, because these are people that are in the informal services. Mm. Uh, they are people that have actually been in, 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 in the service sectors. Mm. And most of them have actually lost their jobs. And in most of the service sectors that we actually work with, mm. you would find that over 50% involvement is women. So if there are issues to do with uh, economic uh, shocks mm. they actually affect women more than any other person than any other person wow so um, if I may, may give another example of uh, some of the issues that are actually happening we are going to come to those issues a little later yeah um, let me just go to Sahad here uh, and good to have you and Thank I'm you. grateful that Sehad is here. He's very passionate about um, social protection services. You are CSO that is rights, 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 <laughs> and we go. Um, from your perspective as Sehad, what do you make of the social services today in Uganda? Um, first of all, I think that, like uh, Willie has said, there's mm. uh, a lot of um, vulnerability that has come with yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. So the fact that even the people who are already vulnerable have 
been uh, exposed to more vulnerability in terms mm. of they're extremely vulnerable. Yesterday we were commemorating the uh, International Day of the Girl okay. Child yeah. and I think that um, that's one of the categories of people that are really vulnerable yeah. and have uh, been exposed to more vulnerability during this uh, pandemic mm. uh, with the with the you know children the young people staying at home for almost two years not mm. in school um, we've had reports we've seen reports in the media we've also seen uh, yes I think <coughs> uh, Ministry of Gender also released a report mm. in terms of the teenage pregnancies that are happening in the country the you know um, unprecedented numbers mm. and uh, s uh, the unfortunate bit is some of these are actually happening within the homes the report that Ministry yeah. of Gender um, released this week mm -hmm. uh, said you know out of 140 re uh, thousand cases that were reported for teenage pregnancies 14,000 were you know through defilement by either parents mm -hmm. or guardians so for these children who are actually uh, unfortunately stuck at home mm -hmm. with the guardians and the parents who are, should be protecting them mm -hmm. so it is uh, not a good picture but also in terms of access to education mm -hmm. um, uh, fortunately, the, the, the you know the children, the learners in urban in urban uh, settings, and uh, you know with at least uh, a well of uh, parents have been able to maybe access it, to a certain extent access uh, education or continue with their education during this prolonged period of uh, staying at home through mm -hmm. online. Um, they are able to at least uh, they have computers, they have uh, uh, access to uh, laptops or smartphones, mm -hmm. but. There is a bigger uh, learning uh, percentage of uh, young uh, children uh, and young people in the rural areas, yeah. in the urban uh, slum areas within <coughs> Kampala, who are not able to access those uh, um, gadgets. They are not ab able to access the laptops. They are not able to access the smartphones. They are not able to access the even internet because it's a cost um, mm. that you know they may not be able to access so there's a bit of uh, inequality in terms of access to to mm. this uh, services for the young people especially mm. the, the 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 girl child the theme yesterday was about um uh, digital you know the access to digital and of course that's where we are we mm. are going there's no turning back yeah. everything is digital now but having uh, you know access to that digital we need to be able to um, have the young people the, the you know the who are in need of <coughs> this to access these uh, digital services mm. so that we don't leave them behind so I think in, in I would um, in a nutshell, in a nutshell that is the I'll status. The status yeah. uh, Mr. Kasaija, w w when you hear all of this, mm. you as government, whose mandate is um, charged uh, to deliver community empowerment, protection, and promotion of rights of specific vulnerable um, uh, groups mm. for social protection and, and gender responsiveness and uh, development, what comes in your mind? What is the government doing about this? Yes, thank you, moderator, mm. uh, and our viewers. Uh, government, of course, uh, all of us know that COVID is a shock. Yes. And this is a, almost a global shock. Mm. I think it is almost one unique mm. one we have experienced in our own lifetime. Mm. Uh, it has affected many of our government programs. I would tell you that uh, for the last uh, 10 years, government had come up with a strategy of trying to establish a strong and comprehensive social protection system. Mm. We had started that and the uh, policy <coughs> of social protection had just been approved in 2015. Yeah. And uh, some interventions related to that, strengthening the system, mm -hmm. we had already started embarking on those. Mm. I can tell you as we talk, we have already now a program on direct income support Mm. If you know direct income support to vulnerable households, mm. vulnerable individuals, mm. uh, which we government programs which have been started in that direction. Mm. You have heard of uh, SEDGE, yes. Social Assistance Grants for Empowerment. Mm. For instance, that was one of the initiatives we started to pilot. Mm. Uh, when we started, we were looking at vulnerable households, but also looking at the older persons. Mm. And uh, we were trying to test and learn whether social protection could work mm. in this country. And by the time we finalized the policy, we had <coughs> clear evidence that that could work. And so that program has started. By then it was only 15 districts. As we talk now, it is covering the entire world.
country. country. Mm -hmm. And if it was not this pandemic intervention, mm -hmm. we would have now be saying we are lowering the age to go up to 70 or 65 years, so that mm -hmm. all older persons, and we know these older persons, some of them are the guardians of the, my sister is talking about the yes. girls, young yes. children and what. Mm -hmm. Some of those parents, older people are the guardians mm -hmm. of those children. So if we are getting more of them and getting empowered, I believe it would, the situation would be different. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, government is still focused on that line of implementing that policy. Mm. As we talk, government had also come up with several other interventions. We have talked of the Women Enterprise Program, yeah. which is trying to reach out to all our women mm. down there with some uh, resources which they can invest mm. and develop their entrepreneurial capacity so that they can generate some income. Mm. So that <coughs> over time they should be able to support these children, the girl children. Like now when this shock happens, mm. they should be able to have at least air time and uh, access a uh, radio, batteries mm. in a radio, listen to what is happening mm. and learning will do, take place. Uh, Mr. So Sege, that brings me to um, um, the gap in the access to equal opportunities now here mm -hmm. because um, she painted a very good picture. She yeah. said that uh, um, with, with the learning <coughs> on TV, on radio and all, mm -hmm. but there is the marginalized figure mm -hmm. of those who don't have access to mm -hmm. this kind of technology. Mm -hmm. What is your ministry mm -hmm. doing about this? How are we bridging the gap with um, uh, either affordable technology mm -hmm. or you know, good technology that they need in communities that mm. no one is left behind in that region. Yeah, sure, that one is right. And I think as a Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, mm. government mm. works as a one unit. Mm. It's not that the Minister of Gender will provide. Mm. For mm. us, we rise, we point those. That's what she's saying, that uh, books which have been yes. released here, guidelines and mm. what. It's not only for the public, but also for other the technocrats, nation, yes. other agencies mm. to take note. Mm. For instance, that issue of uh, accessibility to technology. Mm. You have heard of recent government talk about finding radios, finding what government has been discussing. Minister of Education, for instance, mm. is really thinking about these children and the plans are underway mm. to see how they can raise that. You can want to supplement on that? Yeah, uh, I, I would like to thank Mr. Seven for actually talking about the, the National Social Protection Policy. Mm. Mm. When you read uh, that, it's a beautiful policy. Mm. On paper. On paper. Thank you. It's a very mm. beautiful policy. Mm. Mm. And uh, most of the things that we've talked about here, mm. issues of inclusiveness, yes, issues um, of human rights, yes. are actually captured mm -hmm. in, in, the in the policy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think when it comes to issues of creating awareness about some of these policies, mm -hmm. not only to the technocrats, but mm -hmm. also the citizens mm -hmm. of our nation. The because end they, users. Yes, because they actually need to know because <coughs> they're the end users. Mm -hmm. They are the last people to receive the service that we're actually planning for at national level. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. So issues of awareness, I think we need to have a lot of commitment to ensure that whatever we're actually planning mm. is not uh, reaches the ground. He mm. actually talked about uh, the Women Entrepreneurship mm. Fund. Mm. He also talked about, there, is, there are other programs that are yes. actually mm. running, the Youth yes. Livelihood Fund. Yes. Um, there's the Mioga, there's the Mioga. Mm. Oh dear. You know? Every but time I oh hear the word <laughs> Mioga, I <coughs> it disturbs. You know? Mm. Yes. So, there is the, you talked about the senior citizens grant, yes. you know. At least I've seen that one working. Even the, the, the green program, the green jobs. The green, program. the green jobs programs. Mm. So all these programs are actually there. Mm. But as a person who works with communities on mm. ground, yes. little is known about these programs. programs yeah. And to me, I think we, the, we need to have a comprehensive and collaborative way of doing things mm. so that there is an integrated and consultative way mm. of actually bringing these programs on board. Yeah. You know, when we actually meet, to, he, told, he talked about the government not being a uh, minister of gender. Only. Alone. It's, it's a more sexual yes. approach. Mm -hmm. But the integration in the planning mm -hmm. and consultative involvement in all these issues, mm -hmm. to me, I think is key. What you, do you mean? You remember? You, you mean some of these policies, it's, it's, it's more like an up-down approach? Very good. Now that's mm -hmm. my point. Okay. It is more of an up-to-bottom. Mm -hmm. For example, Recently, we had an intervention on COVID-19. Mm. And you remember the National Planning Authority came out to say I was not consulted. Yes. <laughs> and you know that... <laughs> Even the LCs <laughs> say... Mm. I, I didn't want to go to the LCs. Yes. But that's, this, is, this is what I mean. Yeah. As involving all stakeholders, mm. from local councils to mm. civil society to mm. minist uh, ministries, mm. other government institutions that are concerned. I think when we begin doing such a thing as a country, we shall be actually moving a better milestone mm. in most of these programs. Because all these programs... Inclusiveness at all there. Yes, because all these programs, we want to see that Uganda achieves 
most of its development outcomes mm. at that level. But I think we keep doing things uh, in, 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 in isolation, yes. and that creates a big gap. It actually widens the vulnerability. Mm. Uh, the investments do, do not measure up to, yeah. to, to benefit the, the target beneficiaries. Mm. So mm. to me, that's what Mr. I want. Mr. Kasaja, now that brings me to mm. another, another bit. Mm. How is then the parish model mm. in tandem with the policy we have on social protection, mm. that it's going to cascade the entire policy mm. to the last person at the bottom of the pyramid to benefit? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I've not engaged so much in the parish model, but what I already know, mm. that the parish model is taking much of the services close to the parish level now. Mm -hmm. I think it will try to address the concern, yeah. which really has raised mm. that uh, involvement at Inclusive, that level, yeah, yes, inclusiveness yes. and one. Mm. I can tell you key aspects from the social protection angle I can see already. Mm. Uh, parish model is already catering for these other groups mm. at that lower level. They have said there will be a share, 10% <coughs> of whatever fund, for instance, government is going to put 100 million yes. uh, per parish. parish yes. uh, 30 percent of that will go to women, mm -hmm. 30 percent will go to youth, there is a 10 percent for persons with disability, mm. and then there is the other 30 which can cover all men or mm. people who come up. So that alone, uh, parish at least is not a very big yes, unit. The yes. mm. uh, civil society which operates there mm. will have a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, all units of government will be there. Mm. Community development, parish, all those people will be engaged. Mm -hmm. And I think as a ministry, mm. we are in charge of the mindset and everything. Mm. So we are already in putting into that and trying to make sure that all these vulnerable groups are not they excluded. Mm. They participate in that model. And uh, Anna, w w when you hear this conversation from yeah. where you sit and stand as Sehad, yeah. um, the issue of inclusiveness, you might have been a little yeah. bit, you know, yeah. subtle about it. <coughs> But you see it in glaring lenses every other day. Yeah. How do we address it? How do we take this conversation from the Kuzi studios here to the ground, to the last person, and they get to know that this is my call to action, but it's the duty and the mandate of these arms to give this mm -hmm. to us? I think uh, I would agree with what uh, Will said earlier mm. in terms of consultation. From the beginning, mm. I think that even in, uh, in, in terms of implementation, it becomes easier when you have consulted from the beginning mm. and also conducted a needs assessment. Sometimes uh, government programs fail because they have the, the people, the beneficiary who are supposed to benefit or, you know, uh, from these programs have not been consulted. Mm. And the things that are taken to them are the end of the day are not maybe applicable we have we have seen with the uh, I think the NADS program where they the maybe the the, the seeds or whatever they that have been taken to a certain community are not what are viable in that uh, um, location mm. so they they fail because there wasn't that prior needs assessment to see what exactly do these people in this community require mm -hmm. and what works for them what is more viable so looking at that i think that um, inclusivity mm. should go beyond just saying oh these people are included but mm. participation actual participation from the beginning of yeah. the of the program um, mm. you know development and then that would ensure that the implementation is smooth and mm. also uh, the impact is felt because then they are involved from the start. Involved. Then, yeah. then what, what is your, your organization planning to, to do to ensure that Ugandans acquire the social services they need? Well, we, we've, we've done uh, a lot during the, 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 the pandemic, pandemic to see that there is that... We could <laughs> see some of the stories here we're covering them. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, to see <coughs> that, that there is that equi you know, equitable access to, is, uh, first of all, the health services, because that's where we are when our work uh, is based in terms of uh, access to health services. Our mm. vision is social justice in health. Yeah. So uh, we've, uh, during the 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 second wave of covid we saw uh you know people being stranded, families being stranded with dead bodies at health facilities because mm. they couldn't pay mm. for those costs. We took on that to uh, institute a strategic case in uh, in court to to direct the Minister of Health to uh, pu you know ha put in place regulations on mm. um, uh, regulating the costs. And uh, <laughs> we thank uh, you know it's lucky that the court agreed with us and yeah. that uh, you know <coughs> the, uh, you got the medical the dental. 
practitioner developed that regulation and it was uh, given to the minister and I think that it, if it's implemented that gives a bit of you know backing to the uh, people not to go into uh, you know exorbitant costs that uh, throw them into mm -hmm. poverty and all this so uh, we've done that but we've also um, in those cases where the people are stuck were stuck with dead bodies in the hospitals we wrote letters we went there physically and provided legal mm -hmm. uh, uh, support to them to see that they are able to uh, move on with their lives and to release the mm. uh, boys. But we've um, also uh, have uh, a legal uh, aid clinic to support. In this, during these times, there have been a lot of um, uh, uh, gender by based violence. Yes. You know, there's cases, mm -hmm. even the cases of development defilement that I talked about. Yeah. You know, be, people being able to <coughs> come, uh, you know, call to to for legal support mm -hmm. uh, into our offices. So we are doing that. But mm -hmm. of course, this doesn't reach everyone. So it's more it's piecemeal yeah. because as an organization and with a, a, a partners, we're not reaching everyone. Mm -hmm. So it has to be. A, a you know a multi-sectoral mm. approach mm. everyone has to be involved to mm. see that you know there's uh, equity in access to uh, health care equity in access to justice because some of these cases mm. like the defilement those are criminal uh, cases that mm. the law enforcement needs to be on board um, you know government needs to be on board and sometimes I, I I'm sorry to say but sometimes the statements that have been made especially with the teenage pregnancies are disheartening uh, uh, on on for us as you said we're, where we're watching from yeah. where our leaders say oh, yeah uh, after all pregnancy will not kill this child that's not <laughs> that is not true at all in fact it's not well, an accurate well, uh, statement uh, so An anna might like to be a little bit subtle the president of this country <laughs> is on record <laughs> having said that yes you're claiming a lot about i think he was responding to something to do with schools being closed yes and he yeah. said yes um they're getting pregnant but pregnancy is die. not kill, kill. Um, we can deal with the effects later and <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't yeah, believe it I, myself when I heard it as well. It's, yes, it's, it's uh, disheartening because <coughs> as much as this, uh, first of all, they are not ready to, they are not to in the age of, of, yes, yes. of childbearing mm. uh, age, so they will have to either face, um, uh, you know, long-term morbidities, consequences, consequences yeah. of mm. having children when they were not ready, mm. either to deal with fistula or whatever other impact yeah. that may have mm. on their lives. But for some of these, they are pushed into, forced into unsafe abortion. So mm. they are, that might even be at the end of their journey if it, things go, you know, mm. wrong. And, uh, but also the impact on their life you know for a long time some of them are not going to be able to go back to school Ever. and and uh, that you know we're talking about uh uh, economic uh, empowerment if they've not gone to back to school they've mm. stopped probably p7 or whatever how are they going to first of all be um, uh, productive citizens for mm. this country they to contribute to that vision 2040 that we talk about mm. the, you know in 20 years they're, they're, they're the ones going to be the key players in mm. the economy so they need to be empowered mm. they need to be uh, that's we have to look beyond just uh, uh, saying pregnancies you know won't, won't kill, kill them anyone. there's uh, impact uh, beyond uh, that is that <laughs> for a life mr yeah. kasaja wants to respond think, to that in yeah, a minute. but i think that one has to be put in perspective yes i think his excellency must have just been responding take the children back to school, yes. COVID spreads mm. and 80% of them die mm. immediately. Mm. I think that's the perspective we need to look at. It doesn't mean that mm. he wanted to say <laughs> that. Okay, uh, yeah. uh, will he wants to respond? Just to re echo something uh, yes. on, the, on, on this very point, mm. actually. Of, you know, of children, of being children pregnant? getting mm. pregnant. Mm. You know, when we look at the entire situation of COVID-19, mm. we have talked about COVID-19 increasing vulnerability of people. Yes. And one of, uh, one of the categories are our children. Mm. That's why issues of teenage pregnancies are actually Coming come. Through. So if we actually undermine or don't address such issues, mm. that means we're actually increasing the burden mm. of vulnerable Ugandans. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So at the, at the end of the day, whether you are the president, it will catch up with you at, at a certain point mm to address issues of vulnerability of this particular mm -hmm. uh, category of people. Mm -hmm. So so many people have actually, uh, so many categories mm. have actually, uh, categories of vulnerability have actually caused issues. Mm. When we look mm. at issues of age, 
we talk about the children and the elderly. Yeah. When we talk about uh, issues of disaster, we, mm. you talked about a disaster that happened somewhere yes, in Chivali. In Chivali. Mm. So we have to look at all those things comprehensively. Mm. There are issues of, 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 of issues of poverty. Mm. So you have to actually address all these things. Some people have actually been vulnerable because of their health. Mm. Oh, yeah, true. You know, you actually asked Anne what they have actually been doing. Mm. And I was also eager to actually say something yeah, about, please. about what what, what, what have you been doing. But but before we go there, yes. you, you, you came in with, with, um, with the political leadership of this country. Yes. Do you believe there is a political will to, to amplify and, um, you know, and extend these services? Um, where where, where Stephen sits yes. uh, to the to the people is the political will there and if it's there, uh, to what percentage yes. is it active? <coughs> well, actually, personally, mm. when I talk about social protection issues, mm. I love the fact that there is political will. Okay. I've actually seen the political will. Mm. When uh, Mr. Pasaija talks about all the programs, all the plans that are going on, mm. you see that there is actually political will. Mm. Even from uh, addresses from the, uh, the, the, the head of state, yes. you know, he actually tries to bring out programs that address issues of, 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 of vulnerability, right, yeah. reducing poverty, increasing mm. increasing employment mm. for people, women he and youth. For pillars. <laughs> and, and, and I read his book just to understand prosperity model. <laughs> One, industrialization, mm -hmm. IT, IT, services, uh, agriculture, agriculture. On, a, on a big scale. Yes. Mm. And you know when you address issues of income generation, mm. you're actually pointing to so many issues of, of, of social protection. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You are addressing employment, you're addressing people's incomes increasing, mm. and all these are... The, these are the effects that come as a result of, uh, of lack of enough income in families. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, lack of access to basic needs yeah. like mm -hmm. food, clothing, mm -hmm. health services. You actually, you you actually addressing all those. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So to me, the political will is there. Mm -hmm. But I think I would go back to my statement that mm -hmm. the way, uh, the way the the, the, the the entire program, the, the entire programs are actually packaged. Mm -hmm. They actually come from up. If the will is there, it's phosphor feeding. Yes. Mm -hmm. If the will is there, mm -hmm. and you actually put stakeholders together, and we see, and then we say, what can we do for mm -hmm. these people? What can we do for this category? Yeah. At the end of the day, it, it actually measures up. Okay. But also, there are certain issues in this in, in, in the social protection uh, systems. Mm -hmm the trickle down effect mm. you know mm. if if say government has come up and has actually allocated resources to address social protection issues in a particular sector for a particular category of mm -hmm. people mm. the trickle down effect sometimes we hear so much investment from up mm. but the trickle down effect by the time it reaches the final consumer, mm. it is actually not felt actually at the end of the day. Mm. Mm. So that's why I agree there is political will, but the processes through which we go to actually implement these programs and interventions, mm. maybe there is a problem that 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 lacks, that mm. actually uh, doesn't it enable. Never reaches the real end user yes. who should be the beneficiary, right? Yes. Mm. Actually, the other thing is mm. when you when you took up when we talked about the policies, mm. right? Mm. We have the national development plan three yeah. now, you know, mm. all those all those kind of uh, all, 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 all those documents when you actually look at them. Mm you see a lot of political will. Mm. You see very beautiful plans to this nation. Technocrats are working. Technocrats <laughs> are working. <laughs> but the process of implementing and monitoring and ensuring that uh, the end user benefits becomes a big, big, easy, big yeah. problem. Wow. We had enormous investments mm. in response to the COVID-19. Mm. You know? Ah. When you talk about the investments that have actually, that Parliament has actually approved yes. to respond <coughs> to the COVID-19 mm. pandemic and, and the social impacts related to COVID-19. Yes. It's a huge sum of money. Mm. But at the end of the day, people don't actually feel it. Mm. I'll give you an example. <coughs> it is estimated that 17.5 million people mm. missed social assistance during the COVID-19 from the response that government mm. made, mm. you know? And me so and you, mm. yes, the relief, the, mm. there was food relief, mm. there was also direct cash relief of around yes. 100,000. Mm. Me and you know that so many people from communities have actually acknowledged not receiving anything from yes. government. Yet they were registered. Yet they were registered, mm. so many registered, and the government says we have actually disseminated all this money to, to mm. the various institutions to ensure that vulnerable Ugandans mm. get. Mm. Recently, we've got stories of people that were actually not qualifying to get this assistance, <laughs> getting they it. Go, they got the money. So the will is there, but 
the trickle down effect is actually uh, mm. mr kasai like this yeah. this brings me back to you mm. what is alluding to it shows a breakage of lack of data yeah. real time data of of our people yeah. do we know how many homesteads are vulnerable in parish a mm -hmm. village b mm -hmm. um what kind of clusters are the vulnerabilities you know registered mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. how is your ministry trying to, to you know to to go around that the issue of the absence mm -hmm. of data yeah sure uh, that uh, issue of data has been recognized as one of the key gaps yeah. and challenges we have and under our social protection policy one of the key interventions we came up with mm. was to establish a single registry on social protection okay and that one as i talk <coughs> now it is already up and running mm, uh, but that uh, single registry on social protection networks all other programs which are operating in the area of social protection mm. to see which beneficiary mm. is already benefiting from what program for instance i can talk of nusa program is one mm. uh, we have the orphans and vulnerable children programs are uh, already on mm. our sage program for senior citizens is already on mm. so we are trying to link with even public service, mm, yeah. NSSF, and what, see who is having some social protection. Mm. However, we have realized that that is not uh, enough because those are already the ones on the program. Mm. We are now trying to develop a module of that same thing to include what we call a social registry. Okay. That social yes. registry now will help to know mm. what is the status of each and everybody in the community. The Once we get that dimension, mm. it's unfortunate that this COVID came before we have operationalized mm. that. Mm. But if we had that, then you would know in this community, mm. so and so works, mm. earns this type of income, is likely to have been vulnerable. Mm. But for the recent interventions, if you realize, mm. the cash relief, mm. that one was uh, targeted at particularly the people who were working mm. Mm, who have been in the informal earning on a day-to-day -day income that was mouth. the hand to mouth mm. that was the target <coughs> but, uh, as you rightly say mm. a lack of uh, clearly identified data source mm. could have raised some of those minor but i think overall the program i would say was 80 percent successful. successful why mm. the speed at which it was delivered mm. it was very record time see that uh, mm. it was only targeting about 500 so Yes. than people mm. and uh, very few people didn't get them at least they go mm. the few outliers in targeting in social protection the biggest mm. challenge you have world over is mm. targeting. targeting but for that one may could say it was a success mm. uh, in terms of See, at least uh, getting Mr. Kasai, I'm disturbed mm. when you use the word a few mm. missed out now those few mm. <laughs> close evening that is the inclusiveness i'm looking at because yeah. the agenda is we mm. don't leave anyone behind mm. how how, mm. how how scalable mm. are these mechanics mm. that when we employ them and we deploy them and we say this is what we're going to do mm. no one is left behind that mm. um, when mr kasaija gets on ntv mm. we'll even miss the word few in his oh. statement no no in social protection you'll always have uh, errors of exclusion and errors of inclusion it has never mm. been a hundred percent even if you you can't have a hundred percent yes. perfect mm. a few now when i say a few mm. if you have a uh, five hundred thousand people and a uh, hundred or two hundred mm. get missed out or a hundred find their way in when they are not supposed to be in there those are uh, accepted okay now that brings me to uh, then at what level are the available mechanism achieved the progress in ensuring adequate social protection for the vulnerable <coughs> you're saying the one for the cash handout Mm -hmm. was around 80% from your perspective. Then when we go to other services with regards to protection, uh, social services mm -hmm. protection, how are we faring as a country? Yeah, I would say we have made significant progress. Mm -hmm. Why? You don't look on at these 500,000. During the COVID intervention, mm -hmm. even the social assistance grants, this mm -hmm. senior citizen grant, mm -hmm. our budget the other <coughs> year was 62.88 billion. Mm -hmm. This year, government double that man almost we are getting 120 billion mm. to reach many more of those older persons otherwise the money we had previously would not have covered all those oh. people. we are talking of 300 thousand people who are receiving this on uh, every month 25,000 shillings mm. so ideally and it is 
progressively going on, mm. that is an achievement. You are talking now of moving to a parish mode. Yes. Many of these vulnerable people are getting. Within the I know of a special grant for persons with disability. It used mm. to be five billion. Mm. As I talk now in this budget, their budget was doubled. They are getting 10 billion shillings. Mm. Persons with disability in those communities are getting that are special getting grant that, yeah. to enable them to start their income generation. So mm. I think the issue of programs evolving, mm. only that the demand is so high. Mm. And of course, okay. as you say, shock. You and me as individuals, we have received the shock. <laughs> but also government, <laughs> government revenues have also received the, what, the shock. <laughs> <laughs> so yet, we are crying here, yeah, so government has to come in, but oh, it's yes. also in a shock, mm. and yes. it's trying to recover. But so it's a 360 cycle. Yeah. Um, coming back to you, Anna, mm -hmm. um, with all these, I want you to share with us some of the challenges you've, you, you've noticed, mm -hmm. and how we can go around them as communities, as a mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. to make sure that social protection is given to every Ugandan within the smallest means we have? Mm -hmm. um, I think even from the conversation as I was listening, mm. although it's uh, not uh, said directly, but I think one of the, the, the what I was hearing, what was not being said mm. by William and uh, and uh, Stephen, Sajid, yes. yes, was that there's that mismanagement of the resources. So as much yes. as there is that um, wheel at the top, the the conduits, you know, the the the, the processes through which this uh, social protection <coughs> comes through mm. this that mismanagement and that uh, I listened to I think a radio program where this the, the, the there was a gentleman who was doing an audit on government programs mm. and uh, on ground, you know, going on ground and he I, his statement he said we need to pray for our country. That was his statement. Because of what he found on ground. Mm. You know, vis-a-vis the, the vis -vis what, what is being reported. Mm. And he was saying how uh, auditors who, uh, you know, uh, who are supposed to bring this uh, reports on what is on ground are given, you know, kid to kidogo to give a false, false report, report yes. uh, at the, you know, at the center. Mm. And yet what is on ground is completely different. different. Yeah. Mm. So we, we, I think that's one of the challenges that the, the, the we have um, not been able able to uh, uh, with tight hands mm. uh, you know uh, the culprits that you know mismanage these uh, resources mm. being brought to book and that continues to be um, a, a, a barrier to the beneficiary getting what is intended for them. Mm. So that's one challenge that needs to be mm. uh, sorted out if the pr that uh, so, so, is going so to then trickle um, down. Does it mean we need to empower our communities to make the noise? Yeah. Where Definitely. Not, if, if, if this was meant to be coming to you as a beneficiary and it did it's reach you yeah. and you raise yes. up your hand regardless of what powers be, now we didn't get these at all. Then? Yes, Are our definitely. Are empowered enough to speak? To I you? don't think so because and 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 you see even uh, uh, in terms of uh, when you talk about empowerment, that the the there's not that protection for the use of blower mm. sometimes that oh, yeah. the person who is probably bringing this information is at a disadvantage because the system does not protect that person oh, yeah. so uh, the the information does not come they're not the cases are not reported and so the solution or to the problem is not uh, achieved mm. so that I don't think that there's that um, uh, mechanism <coughs> and that protection to the people who would rather who would be able to report so yes there is need for that uh, empowerment but mm. the empowerment would be through uh, making sure that 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 whistleblower is protected and that the, the, the powers to which the whistleblower is reporting are willing to tackle right. the problem because uh, you may even go to report and yet the people who you're reporting to are the it's people the within the system. Mm. So then you're left uh, <laughs> helpless. I mean, yes. Yes. The other challenges? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think <coughs> the other challenges um, uh, in terms of uh, priorities, uh, 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 we yes we we know that yes government is in shock and all we we accept and we give that to them that there's will and there's the shock <laughs> but we have seen that uh, their priorities have not uh, you know s spoken to to what they are feeling the shock they are feeling oh, yeah. when mm. they say uh, yeah, I remember uh, I think uh, during this uh, lockdown that just passed when the death the day when they were saying uh, the minister uh, was saying the prime minister was saying uh, 
uh, private sector and the people, citizens of Uganda should contribute to uh, funds to buy the COVID vaccines. Yeah. It was the same day that they were giving members of parliament 200 million to buy cars. So the priority there does not speak uh, very well to the shock that they are feeling. Mm. And, and I think that's also a challenge that sometimes the solution could be there but when our priorities are wrong mm. we're not going to find the solution in terms of having everyone included Unwise. rather than looking at only where maybe benefits uh, a few mm. so that's um I That's think a challenge. A challenge yeah. um, on Twitter here, perfect technique. Thank you so much. Then he says, the, so he is to blame. I don't get this thing of the girl child suffering from pregnancy. Who took them there apart from those who are raped and defiled? The rest should take responsibility. Well, um, perfect technique. We are not blaming people here. We are looking for solutions. We are trying to find mm. uh, lasting solutions that could possibly cascade these conversations far and beyond. Um, then someone here says on Twitter is saying that uh, we should pray for our country mm. with capital letters <laughs> and puts on those emojis of praying. <laughs> and uh, she goes on to say she is Sharo Uganda. She's, uh, she goes on to say that uh, at times the powers that be that should protect the social services dismantle the systems of the social services. Yeah. As we're finalizing this conversation, um, uh, coming back to you here, are women in your communities, now that you amplify the women in, in rural communities, yeah. are they working? If they are working, are the men supporting them to work? And when they earn, where do their earnings go? Well, um, the women... You made a very big sigh. I'm worried now. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Jimmy, Willie. Honestly, uh, women <coughs> are very important. Uh, I think gender in the economic development of yes, our they nation. Mm -hmm. They're actually actively working. Mm -hmm. But uh, what one thing I want to say is that they benefit less from Why? their labor. For example, if I may talk about agriculture, mm. what is actually common in, in most of the rural areas is that women do most of the working, but when it comes to getting proceeds from from the, the crops they grow mm -hmm. it's the men that actually manages the finances and how men manage the finances after a season of growing maybe maize mm. and say you have actually uh, got maybe like two million out of it mm. that's when the man will marry another wife that's when the man will go for will, will go and either use the money to drink but the, act, the women are actually working mm. so as a country we <coughs> still uh, have a big challenge. Have you tried to talk to the men in these communities? Have you tried to show them that, look, if you become the support structure of the women, if they're financially strong and muscled well, um, we can fight poverty, we can have a sustainable household income, Yes, as mm -hmm. the framework says? Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> it, it also depends on some of the social factors that are actually uh, in a particular community. What are some for, of for example, that, that first example that I've given, mm -hmm. it actually speaks to most of the women that are in the, the central and yes. eastern parts of the country. Mm -hmm. But when you go to places like West Nile, mm -hmm. for example, we have a program as Arue there, mm -hmm. you'd find most of the men actually doing a lot of sitting all day playing uh, these uh, matatu, rudo games matatu rudo mm. and the women are actually in the field doing the doing the work they're mm. actually digging they're growing crops but when it comes to Real money work. the finances mm. that's what actually comes out so when we talk about uh, social protection issues i actually wanted to say this so mm. that uh, mr steven can actually know what mm. is actually happening mm. uh, you actually asked me uh, what we have done for As example Arua. Mm. Uh, we, Arue has a program in, in Wakiso mm. that responds to gender-based violence, for example. Nice. And in one of our approaches to gender-based violence, we have the women, we empower them, we speak to them, they are our, they are our people, they are our mm. targeted groups. Mm. But one of the things that we do is to specifically also target men okay. in some of these interventions. Mm. And when you talk about uh, when you when you talk about issues of meeting men mm. you actually be, become amazed because mm. uh, most of them when they actually get to understand mm. some of these issues mm. for example some of the consequences of domestic violence you know what happens that families break up yeah and a, a man will even actually get more responsibility because mm. uh, a woman would run away with children mm. and the man would want to marry another wife so at the end of the day as arue we have actually <coughs> tried to we actually call it male involvement in our programs yeah, yeah we mm. need it 
Yes, mm. male involvement. Mm. And why I'm mentioning this is that we are doing it as a rule, but it has to be led by the core service provider of the nation, and that is the central government. Yeah. Mm, that's why I'm actually men mentioning it here. Mm. So somehow, women have actually suffered uh, a number of issues. Mm. First of all, they don't own land. Yeah. They actually just use the land, yet they would love to own the land. Mm. So if there are issues of domestic violence and the woman maybe is just out of the home, mm. that woman will not have any other factor of production to use. So vulnerability increases and it will increase the burden onto the nation. Overhaul, yes. Overhaul. Yeah. So basically speaking, the women are actually benefiting less. Mm. And yet it is a big, big proportion of our our our, our product, pro, pro production sector. Mr. Kasaidi, yeah. as you're finalizing this conversation as a government, mm. um, I want to know, uh, what is your commitment as government to bring men on board to address these issues? Because um, I, I see a lot of um, a synergy uh, kind of thing. If mm. we do our rights mm. well mm. as men, if we empower the women correctly mm. and we live in harmony, yeah and they're really empowered financially, and mm. we don't mismanage their funds they have made. Yeah, sure. But we plan as a home mm. from the family unit, then the entire nation will actually achieve what mm. needs to be done. Yeah, I think uh, government has recognized uh, all that case, uh, that uh, women tend to be more disadvantaged yeah. when it comes to household economics and, yeah. and everything. So uh, our gender policy has articulated many of what we need as strategies to do that. Mm -hmm. Male involvement automatically should be one of the strategies. Mm -hmm. And I believe all our policies on gender, when they are evolved, stakeholders, I think you have been talking of participation. Yes. We have been trying to consult all stakeholders normally mm -hmm. are brought on the table. Though what I would say, um, changing some of those which uh, aspects which have cultural background and what yes. doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. We have to start and it has to take time. Mm. For instance, if I see government intervention which said, let us take every, our girl child to school mm. and uh, promote, promote that, <coughs> I believe what you are talking about is more likely to affect uh, where education has been very low. Oh, yeah. But mm. if a girl has gone up to S4, mm. you know, and uh, that production, even the young boy also, in fact, as we are saying, more involvement, that yeah. doesn't mean that we, f we shouldn't leave even the boys behind. Yes, the boys. Let us move the girls and the mm. boys together. Mm. They are all in school, yeah. and that's how we shall change our, mm. or some of these uh, stereotypes mm. which have been around and mm. disadvantaging this and that. So I believe it is a long-term strategy. Uh, so strategy. that's what I'm saying. Gender means you have to involve everybody. Everyone. Mainstream it everywhere. Mainstream. In education, in every mobilize, mm. get role models mm. uh, along the own, community. Uh, and Mr. Kasaija, you yeah. alluded to something called mindset change. Yes, yes. And I think it's the ultimate um, hindrance in enjoyment of our social services by most Ugandans. That's true. In this aspect, what kind of mindset should we tweak our Ugandans to mm. that they can be in position to tap into the opportunities that are there. Yeah, so mindset change, for instance, it's attitude to work. Mm -hmm. I've heard, we let's say, some men in one region, they yeah. wake up and go in the center, and be drinking and everything. Mm -hmm. So mindset change for such a group means to value work. Yes. But when you wake up, the first thing you have to do is to work. Yes. You work, earn an income, because if you sit in a trading center for the whole day, one month, two years, yeah. in old age, <coughs> you'll have added, accumulated a lot of poverty. You have but to be, be very vulnerable. Mm. But if you worked early enough and worked hard, mm. and in fact from a social protection perspective, we are mm. trying to extend social security to the informal sector. Yes. Yes. We want to tap into these young people as they start working now, mm. start saving for the future. True. So that uh, when you are 50, 60 years, mm. you have something. You have had people saying we needed to access our money with the NSSF. Mm, the 20%. Uh, 20%. <laughs> for those who have been working and saving it, yeah. for those who have no opportunity, to save, yeah. there's nothing they can say, can I access what percentage? What you have you nothing. You know. So mm. we want to create that arrangement so mm. that everybody, every Ugandan, yeah. uh, 10 years, 20 years from now, should have some fund somewhere. Mm. So if such COVID came, say I want to access my 20%, everybody should have that 20% somewhere. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. Um, uh, still, let me just deal with you at once, Kwa Ujumura. Mm. Uh, <laughs> what could be your, your call to action to mm. citizens mm. as government mm. 
um, what should we do going forward when it gets to social services and protection? Yeah, one thing I would say every Ugandan should uh, think that shocks mm. are real, yeah. vulnerability is real, so we should all try to put in place mechanisms which can keep us afloat mm. in case a shock came, mm. but also uh, mechanisms which can uh, prevent that shock happening from you. That's so right. one is to make sure we work and have an income. Mm. If you are uh, a youth, this is the time. Don't despise any work. Mm. For when you have fun, go in and work. Instead of saying, ah, I have no work, I've finished school, I'm seated here, I can do nothing. Mm. No, fold your hands and go in and, and go do something. Whether it is agriculture, mm. agriculture can be very productive. Yes, yeah. the ideas. I think agriculture is lacking. It asks the people with the brain you know, to go in and do some yes, innovation, yes. And do some research yes. on what you are doing, improve the productivity yeah. and make it do marketing. Mm. Your people now we have this internet yes. technology as you are talking about. Mm. You can access market outside uh, yeah, which some of our old farms in the village may not have. They but you as a youth, if you took that technology, that knowledge mm. that you can search or Google here and do access some market somewhere, you can connect. To okay. happen. Um, I think those are some of the areas I would say. Mm -hmm. Let the youth also come out mm -hmm. and embrace and or contribute to the innovations we need, mm -hmm. targeted to the needs of our people, and then we can, I think, transform Anna, our country. From mm -hmm. Sehad, yeah. what could be your call to actions to citizens? You've always told us to speak up. Yes. Uh, what else <laughs> do we need to do as citizens? Mm. I think uh, earlier you were talking about the guideline that Minister of Gender has yes. uh, in the terms parents, of the parents' the parent guideline. Mm. I think that we have a role to play. Mm. Uh, mm. Again, this is a problem that's not going to take only government. So we need to uh, play our role as parents, especially to encourage the girls who have uh, unfortunately got into the circumstances of the unwanted pregnancies and okay. all so forth mm. to when the schools open to go back to school mm. and as Willie was saying even in terms of the boy child because there's a question that yes maybe we are empowering the girl child but what after the girl then? child mm. uh, we should not leave the boy child behind because yes then that boy child who's not empowered will have to end up marrying this girl and she carries all the burden. Oh, yeah. So we need to uh, have, I think as uh, parents, we also mm. empower the boy child in that. Uh, and also I think that Ministry of, uh, of Gender and mm. other ministries, they need to have uh, interventions to focus on the Ch the, the children out of school mm. as some of the policies mm. that we already have focus on children within school mm. uh, setting but we see we know that there's going to be a, a good number of children who are not going to go back to school oh, yeah. how do we empower them to mm. see that they also um, become uh, productive citizens of this country so for ministry uh, uh, and government and is to you know create interventions and programs that include both mm. children within school and out of school mm. and continue to um, empower the 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 most vulnerable either economically or with mm. knowledge information mm. access to information is very key but also access to health because only health people will you know be able to be productive so okay yeah thank you so much Anna uh, Willie your final words in one minute um, I think my Our call, call to action my call to action yes would actually first go to 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 to, to, to government mm -hmm. um, we need to have to mobilize more financial resources that's one because vulnerability mm. is evident mm. and the investment is still not mm. enough mm. that is one uh, we also need to increase awareness yeah. about social protection issues mm. about our government programs mm. we also have to continue doing uh, advocacy as civil society organizations yeah. Uh, we have to involve ourselves in anti-corruption campaigns mm. so that whatever investment is made by government it's realized it's realized okay yeah thank you so much it has been such a great conversation uh, you and i who have been a part of this i want to thank you so much fellow citizens i want to uh, welcome you on board that we can all play a key role to make sure that we all get the social services in our communities but not only that to make sure that we are the voice that people need to hear this program was organized by a ruin not only that it was equally powered by um 
our, our great other partners, that is Osier. But thank you so much. In studios, I had the senior program officer from Sehad and Lumbasi, and I had the programs manager uh, on governance, that is Wile Kawanguzi, the executive there uh, from, from Arua. Then we had the head of expanding a social protection program, too, from the Minister of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. Those of you who are online and a part of this conversation, thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.